そういう決定するところがあったみたいですどちらかというと I'm not my calculator Do your head Come on Okay 6.75 times Times 10 to the 9th, yeah Get it? Uh <laughs> what are we asking for? Newtons? Yeah, well, let's move before I heard somebody say it. Now, we have a magnitude here. The question is, what is the direction of the force acting on this? Now we think through it. What is the direction of the force on the six uh, Coulomb charge? Uh, so it's attracted? No, they're repelling. Why? Because they're both positively oh, charged. Oh, they're both positive, so it's repelling, so the force is to the right. And so we can get away with direction, with establishing that it's positive, and then optional to put the plus sign in front of it. What is the, is that a W? That? Yeah. That's a 10. Oh. Okay. That's a it's a fancy looking tent. Yeah, I was very. <laughs> it's cursed. Cursed? Don't worry. It's a cursive, perhaps. You got the two. Like cursed. 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 Did you get both the negatives from the integration process, right? That yeah, the, the, we had a negative here and then the negative here. They, those oh, okay. Were but even if they hadn't canceled out, um, we would still, the, the negative sign is an indication of direction, but we would just think through the direction. Yeah. Okay. Depends on how obsessive you become. Other data. I'm a little confused how we got uh, 5 over 24 from the integral. One, once we got, the integral got us this from 8 to 3, so we plug in a 3 to 1 third minus 1 eighth. Could you? Which is 8 24ths. All right. Okay. Minus. Yep. Got it. It's okay to uh, re substitute the U and use the same. But put 8 minus X back yeah, in? Yeah, that's okay and use the same like, limits. That's the way I actually usually do it, uh -huh. but uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd be trying to be a little bit more sophisticated. Oh. For this, shouldn't should, should we add the integral? Should we add it? But like it has a negative sign. Uh, the, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, throw the, I threw the negative sign out here, and so it's the negative of the difference. Oh. If you want to distribute the minus sign, that's not my Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other questions before I make it a little more, more difficult? Harder or more, more hard, I don't think it's really legitimate. We're going to ramp up. We're going to ramp up. All right, the general process is when I have a distribution of charge, if I can't, if I don't have a shortcut for it, and there's not one for this, I have to create a DQ and then work it through there, try to get into terms of a single variable. So now, let's go three dimensions. surface charge distribution. Uh, radius of capital R. I have it centered at the origin. And I have some other second charge here. Oh, let's actually give some. Um, the circle or the sphere has a charge of Q, and 
the charge here at this point, the distance L from the origin is little q. And I want to know what is the force on little q? We have a distribution of charge, so we need to establish some differential of charge. So I'm going to establish, in this particular case, a band of charge here that where every point is equidistant from Q. And I'm going to label that little r. So this band is of infinitesimally small amount of charge, but not zero. So I'm going to come up with an equation for the force between dq and little q, and then I'll integrate over all the values, all possible dqs there are. So I know that my force K little q dq over r squared. We really do need to bring in direction. Yeah. Because that's what we are missing, of course. What is the direction of the net force on little q? Assume that little q and big Q are both positives, which is a general rule of thumb. If you don't know, assume that they're positive, you work through it, and one of them happens to be negative, then you'll throw a negative number into the final answer. So it wants, it wants to rotate. Yeah. So the force of direction is away from the origin on, on little q? So along the y-axis? No, just, oh. Uh, In general, along the y-axis. Yes, along the y-axis. And you, did, and you were a little bit hesitant to say along the y-axis, you just said away? No, yeah, I just said like away in general. Because don't, don't we have to establish the direction like yz with vectors and stuff? Do we? No. This is where physics and math differ. What's the justification for it being along the y-axis? This is the shortest way out, I guess. If it's really, if it's trying to escape like if it's trying to repel against from the origin, it's trying to get out. So it's not repelling from the origin; it's repelling from the ring. <coughs> from the ring. Well, if it's all uh, uniform around it, it's going to want to go straight up. Oh. Uh, because if I look at this point on the circle and this point on the circle, there, the forces are going to be like that. The horizontal components will cancel out. Okay. By symmetry, and this is a key phrase that shows up in physics enough times. By symmetry, we can eliminate all of the components of the forces in this direction. Okay. In theory, you can work out the math and you'll come out to zero. Really exciting. But I know that ultimately it's going to be in that direction. Okay. J hat. J hat. Wait, what did we use to base off that, that off? Like, I get like the forces cancel out and it goes upwards. But how do you know the force is coming inward? Well, Wait, which? Because you know how like the horizontal forces cancel out, right? And it goes vertical, right? But how do you know the those forces are canceling out in the first place? That the horizontal forces are canceling yeah. out. All right. So if I've got where's the hula hoop? But I need one. <laughs> use a use a bicycle. Oh, you know, that's, yeah, that's fine. Very easy. All right. So imagine that little q is right here, mm -hmm. and this is my ring dq. That there's some point on my, of my charge right here, which is exerting a force in that direction. For every point that I have on the wheel exerting a force like that, I've got one on the opposite side going like that. Mm -hmm. And so I've got forces basically in that direction. That there's no reason for the magnitude to be stronger one way than the other. Mm -hmm. So that's why the horizontal forces will cancel. And all you're left with is just that component. Mm. Okay. Is that, I feel like I didn't actually answer your question. 
Well, I, I get the explanation, but I was like just curious, like, is there ever a case like where the forces would instead go outwards? Oh, that the, those components do exist? Mm hmm. Yeah. Or, or we but, simply assume? Yeah. Um, with a distribution of charge like this, you could. If I chosen my ring at a jaunty tilt, then I could have forced it, but that's just a lot of extra work. But what if it wasn't uniform? Uh, not uniform. That would also do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's more where the I think that's where the confusion is. Because it's uniform, we're got, we know it's going to cancel. Right. Like, this yeah. force going. This force going to equal here. Yeah. If but, it were not uniform, then we cannot make that assumption and. We are probably quite frequently the amount of math we have to do. Okay. Okay. So we gotta. I say that for the test. Not that you probably deal with them, but okay. if anything, we gotta look out for uniform. Yes. That's a word. A whole lot of problems with uniform. Yeah. <laughs> so if it was spinning like this instead, it would be the vertical forces that cancel out. Okay. If I chose the uh, if I chose the ring yeah. like this. Yeah. Yeah. If it was split. Well, only if the charge, again, were sort of symmetric with the center like that. I mean, I, I could always rotate the whole, I could rotate everything, but if I had my point here and I chose my disc like that, then I, you could still argue by symmetry that for every circle I have here, I have a circle over here. Mm -hmm. And whatever component is, those horizontal components would cancel. I feel like I'm still missing what you what you're trying to ask. No, but you're straight. So if our problem was just flipped to where our wheel was vertical, it, it'd be the same thing. It'd still be it then cancel out. It, vertical. So if the problem were like this, yeah. So the charge is still here. Uh -huh. Then all of these components, any components in this plane right here, would all be canceled. Yeah. And it'd be the net forces in that direction. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Okay. Sometimes the physicists, the physicists will look at this and they'll give you, they'll set up your coordinate system like this, and they'll put the charge over here. How do you handle that? Is that is that on the K hat or is that on the it's, J hat? It's yeah. some non-zero x, y, and z. We don't have a frame of reference for these numbers, but some sort of yeah. number it's at. Do they at least give you like some kind of coordinate system? Or like, do they give you a point like where that is yeah. relative to the origin? Yeah. So we could just figure out. There's a very simple solution. Do three equations, each no. with relative to the... I'll tell you when you just make your own coordinate system. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. that's right. yeah. <laughs> I like your way more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we need to figure out DQ, <clears throat> and I'm going to take a look at Dallas to DQ first. All right, so it's a band here. I know the distance from here to here is that's just the radius that's from the center to where the Q is, or to the edge, just R. So basically I've got this triangle here. This is like L, that's like R, and this is big R. Now, we didn't have to do this on the last one, but I guess in a sense we, we created an X, which is a temporary variable. We do need to create temporary, vari uh, temporary variables here also, except for what we're doing angles. So we're gonna call this theta and call that alpha. So theta is this angle here, alpha is this angle here. I'm trying to figure out what is the area of this circle. Oh, oh that, it's a, that line? Of that line right there. Well, alpha will stay constant, right? No, not necessarily, but it won't work. Oh, 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 for everything on this ring, alpha and theta are constant. Okay. For a different ring, 
they're not possible. Imagine I've got a circle here. It's got some really small thickness. I cut it and open it up. So I've got a rectangle. How long is it? You got a, you open oh, up the, the screen, diameter. Oh, it's the diameter. No, it's twice the diameter. Okay. Try that again. I've got this, basically this band right here. I'm trying to find the area of this infinitesimally small area of this infinitesimally small band. Isn't there a calc like a formula for that? Is yes, there is. The, 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 the something, dy, some. Uh, You're going way complicated there. It's, it's just 2 pi r. That's the length. Where r is this distance there. Which I'll just. Uh, that kind of, the cursive r. It's a different r, third r. There's too many r's. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've got three different, so three different symbols for R here. Uh, so this distance right here is R sine theta. That's the fancy R. It's just R sine theta. I've got a right triangle right here. So my stretched out, my length is 2 pi times big R sine theta. But now we've got this thickness to deal with. How thick is it? We sort of expand on just that little section right there. It wouldn't just be 2 pi cosine theta, right? 2 pi R cosine theta. I don't right. think so, but... 2, two pi R cosine theta that, that would be the width, if anything. No, that's not the width. So I've got my, basically, I'm looking at the edge of my sphere. Okay. And my DQ, my band of DQ, basically captures just a little bit part of that. This distance is R. Um, I don't want to do that. This is just an arc length. Oh. If it's a distance r away from the center and it has a width here of, oh, wait a second. So that angle there is theta. Okay. Here we go. Arc length is equal to the radius times the angle. Flashback to trig. So if this angle here is theta, that's the angle from here, then this little sliver of an angle is the differential of theta. And so my arc length is r d theta. That's my width. So dA is 2 pi r squared sine theta d theta. Oh. Now if you didn't realize we needed to find dA yet, you would, the next thing that we do is we do them in reverse order. I know that my surface charge density, I'll use sigma for that is equal to charge divided by area, which is equal to dq over dA. So therefore, dq is equal to sigma dA. And so we will be making that sense. Wait, what is that symbol on the left side of 2a? That, that's a sigma, oh, sigma. lowercase sigma. Using the clever tradition of sigma starts with S, and so does surface. I see that it's the correlation begins. So what we have here is that the force. 
Coulomb's constant times little q times dq, which is sigma dA over r squared. And then we need the component that is in that direction, because that's the force like that way, but we need that component. Oh, that's alpha, that's alpha. times the cosine of alpha. We have something for dA. So this is equal to kq sigma 2 pi big R squared sine theta d theta over R squared. Pardon? The R squared is canceled. Uh, that's a big R, that's a little R. This is the radius of the sphere, and this is the distance from the <coughs> ring of charge to little q. Okay, so they don't. Gina. So we start out establishing a dq. We create some intermediate variables, the theta and the alpha. We get everything, we put it into our formula. And the last thing is we need to get it in terms of a single variable. And this is where the tricky parts come in. If you haven't done it before, it's not necessarily obvious. I at least want to get set up for that, and then we'll call it a day. So my force, let's pull the constants out. I have kq sigma 2 pi, that's a sigma there, 2 pi big R squared times the integral sine theta d theta over R squared. That's cosine alpha of j hat's constant. This is the math problem. I have three variables. Oh, three variables. Dang. First time I did a problem like this was the first year I was teaching here. I did a triple integral, went through the whole thing, asked if there were any questions, and they said, what did you just do? At that point, I realized that triple integrals was not something that people would necessarily come. 